Hello and welcome. Hi, I'm Dave. This tutorial is part of a beginner's HTML series. I'll be using the Chrome web browser, the Visual Studio Code editor, and the live server extension for Visual Studio Code to view the web page. There are links to these tools, starter code files, and all resources in the description below. Let's look at how to create lists on a web page. Lists are very useful and are used in many places on the web. So we have three different types of lists we're going to create today. Ordered lists, unordered lists, and description lists. Let's start out with recapping here. We've got Visual Studio Code on the left, and I've got the head element collapsed, so we had meta details inside of there. We can collapse that by clicking on the arrow by the line, and you see bet lines between 4 and 11 are now collapsed. So we're working inside of the body element to add content to the page. And this is Visual Studio Code, and I'm running the live server extension. You can see down here it says port 5500, click to close server. If you've installed the live server extension, it may say click to launch or something like that, which would actually launch your web page for you because that's how you want to view it in a development environment. You don't want to just go to file and open the file in your browser. You want to have that live server running that simulates a web server. If you're not familiar with the live server extension, you can click on the extensions logo here. And instead of searching for prettier that I have in there, you can search for live server and you can install that live server extension by Ritwick Day right here. Okay, so we've recapped all of that. Here's the file tree with our files. I'm going to hide that by clicking the file explorer here so we can see more of our code and we will add lists to our web page today. So I'll scroll down to under the subtopic of my daily schedule, and notice how we had these line breaks and spaces here. Well, we're going to replace these, so I'm highlighting the first one, and then I'm going to press Control D, that highlights the next one, and Control D again. Now it has highlighted all three of those. And instead of this line break, I'm going to type LI and press Tab. That adds a list item, but we haven't enclosed this in a list yet, and we definitely don't need the closing list items here. So once again, Control D, Control D. So all three of these will be list items, but they need to be inside of a list too. So let's make this an ordered list by starting out with an OL, and I'll press Tab, and we got the closing OL tag as well. That stands for ordered list, as you might expect. And I'm going to actually put the OL down here after the paragraph tag, the closing paragraph tag, and I'm going to cut with Control X, or you could retype if you want to, and I pasted the closing paragraph tag right after the end of let me tell you how. So this is a shortened paragraph now, and the list will not be inside of the paragraph. And now we have our ordered list, but it also needs closing li tags. So I'm going to type the less than symbol and a slash in Visual Studio Code instantly filled in the closing, the rest of what is needed there. And I'll do that again for the second one. And then I'll do that here for the last one. And notice we do have the abbreviation still nested inside of the list item here. So now I'm going to press Control S and save and Visual Studio Code reformatted that just a little for me. But look at our page now that we've added this list. It's an ordered list and it is numbered. That means it's in, or in order, numerical order, one, two, and three. Notice these are not, this text is not enclosed inside of a paragraph element. So it's not creating that extra space that a paragraph element does. They're stacked right on top of each other. There's still a little bit of space, but not like we have between our paragraphs. So that is an ordered list. We start out with the ordered list element, and then the list items go inside it. And each list item is starting and then ending with the LI. Now let's scroll down and look at our vacation area. It says, I'm also planning a vacation, and we've got a places I would like to visit area. So after that, let's go ahead and add a UL, which as you might guess stands for unordered list, and we'll go ahead and cut that closing tag, and I wanna put it after the address here at the bottom. So this will be our full list. Now we need to declare list items here. 
In this instance, I'm going to go ahead and keep the paragraph tags inside each list item. So we created an LI there, and I'll use Control X to cut and close that first list item here for the first paragraph. I'll do something similar here. Got an LI, but the closing one is going to be in a different spot because our list item can have these tags nested within it, just like we nested the paragraph here. I'm going to go ahead and nest the paragraph and the address inside of the list item here. And so now if I save and Visual Studio Code reformatted my code for me, but notice here's the beginning of the list item and we have the end way down here after the address. So let's look at what this unordered list looks like on our page. And you can see instead of numbers, it has dots. It does have the extra space created by the paragraph tags and the address element still has the content that it had before and still formatted the same. But notice our ordered list and our unordered list are both indented compared to being over here flush to the left with everything else we had like they were before. So similar in formatting from an ordered list to an unordered list, and also realize that the, really the only difference is the bullet point here in an unordered list versus the number in an ordered list. The extra spaces were caused by the paragraph element inside of these unordered list items, and we did not use a paragraph element on these ordered list items. So the list itself and the list items did not create the extra space. That was created by the paragraph elements. Now let's scroll our page. We've got enough content. We need to make sure we're visiting the very bottom here. We want to add more under place I want to avoid. And I'm going to change that to places I want to avoid. And let's go ahead and remove our paragraph that says anywhere cold, no way. And let's add a description list here. So a description list, as you might guess, starts with DL. Now inside the description list, there are two different types of elements. Instead of just an LI like we had in our other lists for a list item, we have a description term. And this description term could be uh, the place we want to talk about. So let's say the North Pole. And now for the description term, we need to also have description details. So that's DD. And here I can put I here. This is now let's go ahead and put our strong emphasis back here. And I'll put cold and then our exclamation mark. So we have put a strong emphasis on cold. And now I'll create an extra line here just to space these apart. Another DT, I'll put the South Pole. And then DD for the details, description details. And I'll say this is also cold. And let's add one more description term. And this will be mountain tops and DD for description details. And these, if I can spell these, these are also cold. Now if we save, let's scroll just a little bit more so we can see all of our content here. You can see our description list has a different format than the ordered list and the unordered list. Our description term is to the left, and then the description details are indented to the right. But here is our full list of the North Pole, South Pole, and mountaintops. We want to avoid all of these places when we go on our vacation. With these new lists now added to our file, let's go ahead and create an error on purpose just to see if we have an error in our page when we check it at our validator.w3.org. And here I'm going to choose File Upload. And I may have to switch folders. Let's see. No, I'm in the right one. So I'll just choose Index.3. I think we're on Lesson 4 and I forgot to change the file, but I'll do that to make sure that the GitHub repo with all the source code is correct. So let's go ahead and check this file. And yes, we have some errors because we created one specifically. Let's see if that's our only error. As we have noted in the past, one error can create a cascade or a lot of errors. So now I've formatted this correctly. Let's go ahead and load our file back up. So we'll choose file. 
We'll choose that index.html file again. And I'll click check. Now everything is OK. Document checking complete. No errors or warnings to show. So realize if you have an error, it could just be one small syntax error that creates a cascade of errors when we're checking. But this is a great way to learn and of course look at the details of the code. And it's always a good idea to validate your code after you write it to make sure you don't have any syntax errors. Remember to keep striving for progress over perfection. And a little progress every day will go a very long way. Please give this video a like if it's helped you. And thank you for watching and subscribing. You're helping my channel grow. Have a great day, and let's write more code together very soon.